Today we're going to talk about a um, second order passive circuit that doesn't include an op amp. You can always add an op amp as a buffer to the end, but we're going to mathematically show why this can um, only be over or critically damped and it can never have complex poles. Of course, um, one way to and the assumption is is that it's we have two resistances and two capacitors or two resistances and two inductors. Um, if you have opposing energy sources like potential and kinetic energy or a capacitor and inductor, you can have a second order circuit and you will have the ability to have complex poles. So this is the generic circuit where we can uh, set these to whatever we would like and we just do some nodal analysis. There's two nodes that we don't know. Um, I should post this in the, in the description where you can go through and we just follow through our uh, nodal analysis and then I put it into things that I can scroll through and a matrix, right? That's our input. And then we solve for it. We get everything in terms of the impedances. And then I can substitute however I want uh, the Z for R1, uh, the impedance of a capacitor. And this would be node one. And this would be node two, although it's not in a, it's not in the required um, format. All right, so um, we can get it close um, in Python, and then you'd have to kind of uh, put S, divide through by this to get it into the right form. Still, it's not a, um, necessarily straightforward to tell you that you can't um, have complex poles, right? But what I'm going to do is just say, here's a generic second order low pass function. We'll set R2 equal to a scalar factor. Um, should be R. And a capacitance with the inverse scale factor so that we're reducing the number of constants. So when all of that is said and done, uh, you can look through this at your leisure, right? Um, we have our overdamped, underdamped, uh, yeah, over critically and underdamped, all right? And we get this relationship. We haven't made these substitutions yet. So here we have, we're going to substitute R2 for R times the scalar factor. C2 will be C divided by the scale factor, and then everything will have the same resistance. Right? And so we substitute that, we'll get this relationship here. And so in terms of infinity, and if we let M go to infinity, right, these would equal each other. And so then they would be critically damped. Now, what's infinity? Well, what I've seen is that M being two is close enough to infinity um, and that you'll get almost get a second order critically damped system. But I've seen that 10 uh, seems to be used quite a bit. And so if we just say R1 is 1K, we scale it, we get 5K in this case. Um, so I guess in this example, I'm doing five, right? Here's my design criteria. We go through, um, what the design equations are again. And then here's the code, you know, M I'm just showing various To where we get a 
low pass filter that will that should be minus six db so um there's i'm kind of showing uh various you know if m is one this is your r1 you know r1 is always the same the m factors change c2 you get and here's what the poles are all right so if m is one the poles are kind of wildly different to still wildly different when m is 5 you're getting closer 10 it might not seem that close but when you go to do it, it, it um, it's actually fairly close and when it's a thousand we're approaching where those two poles are the same so as you can see, I'm making M larger and larger. The poles are getting closer and closer, um, but they will never be exactly equal, but it'll be close enough to a critically damped design, but you'll never get complex poles. So in order for complex poles, you need um, two different kinds of energy storage elements like capacitor and inductor, or you need a op amp circuit with negative and positive feedback that can kind of trick a capacitor in behaving two different ways. And that's the Salinin key filter and the multiple feedback filter.